we have our standard sill sealer here, and he's running a bead of Sashko's Lexol sealant there, running a really nice continuous bead. Ratios being a really good help here in uh, providing us some really good video of a nice continuous bead. I told him he can't be generous enough with that stuff. So you can see it coming down and then he'll push that down. You can see there. Yeah, and you can see that it's under there nicely. And then, so that bead runs down the outside here. We'll run a bead top side here and then put the two by treated uh, mud sill down and then I'll smush it all together like a nice little sandwich. This is their York Shield 106 PT. It's a copper termite shield flashing made by York since 1935. And uh, yeah, that's what we're using out there. And then of course, for our bead of sealant, we got Sashko's Lexel that we're using. I have some limited experience with that, but uh, the builder's got a whole lot of it. it. Says he absolutely loves the stuff and trusts the stuff. So I trust them, I trust Sashko. So anyways, that's what we got going on. I caught these guys before I headed out. You can see we have the bead of sealant on the top and uh, go ahead Horatio, drop that down on top of our sill sealer and get that all sealed up. But uh, now we have that double bead of sealant sandwich happening down there and uh, you can see it there. So, all right, now we're gonna head back to the studio and talk details. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. We got Big Red in hand. You got a nice, beautiful mud sill detail here. Um, like I said, one of my all time favorite details. Been using it for years and years. Probably the first time I used it, I don't know. Um, I know the project was the first time I used it, probably about 2009 when we put that mud sill down. So hasn't failed me yet. And uh, what's that, 13 years? going on 14. So it's a detail that works. It always has worked, never failed me. And I would be assured that it probably always will work. So without further ado, let's grab Big Red. Let's talk details. Let's talk mud sill details. All right. So we're out there. We saw him putting that mud sill down. And um, you can see here, here is ICF wall there with the concrete core and the uh, EPS core on each side here and concrete in the middle. But you can see here that is our mud sill. And here we went to a 2x8 mud sill. You can see it goes from there. What I was trying to do is just get a little bit more um, of that treated mud sill over the concrete. You can see if we use the two by six, it would stop somewhere in here, which we could probably still make that work. I just figured getting the two by eight um, just gets us over there a little bit more and gives us a little bit more of a flange to do our detail. Now, I've been doing this detail. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it. This is not certainly not the only way to do it. Um, but it is a way that I think is very effective. It uses the gravity of the house in our favor as it squishes it down. And because this is concrete, it's going to resist. So we get that nice smushy sandwich um, where the house is pushing down on this. Um, and it just, it's never failed me. So I like the detail. I think it works really well. Um, but again, a lot of people, you know, they would, you know, tape the exterior sheathing or something to the foundation wall and, you know, they're, they're free to do their details. This is the detail that I like. So that being said, two by eight mud sill, you see it sits down on the foundation. Basically we use the 
standard sill sealer, right? So it's that little piece of closed cell foam, but we put it on so basically it ends up being somewhat Z-shaped like that. And the reason for that is, is we put a bead of sealant on top of the foundation wall and then we put the sill sealer down and we put a bead of sealant on top of the sill sealer. So it kind of creates this somewhat of a dumbbell gasket, but the sill sealer itself snakes through. So when this pushes down and the foundation resists, you have this system that's like this that has a bead of sealant there and there basically it ends up smushing and being something that's like that with a smushed out bead there and a smushed out bead there. And so basically we have not just the sill sealer that many people think, okay, that's satisfactory enough, but those extra two beads of sealant and we did use the, you can see Sashko, Lexel there and the two beads, one on top, one below the continuous sill sealer. So one on top, one below, continuous sill sealer, and that runs all around the top of the entire foundation wall. Um, also seal all the butt joints at the sills. So wherever these 16 foot mud sills end up, Right, if you have a new two by eight and then the other one ends up there, then we wanna make sure that we're sealing that butt edge because you're gonna take care of what's happening down below. This is the sill on the side and that's the joint. You're gonna take care of what's down below with this detail, but you're gonna have that little butt joint. So we need to take care of that and make sure that gets sealed. So we call that out as a uh, reminder there so that we get that. Now, all of this is also a belt and suspenders approach in that, you know, at some point we're gonna come in here and we're gonna spray a little bit of closed cell foam in the detail in this area and um, also aid in that air sealing. But that is the first step. That is the detail. Um, like I said, it has never failed me I continue to use it. Why change it? Um, you know, if a builder comes at me with a, a way that they want to do it that's slightly different, certainly I have done it differently in the past. Um, but this one here, we in particular did that one out here. And like I said, my detail and I like it. So I'm going to use it. Well, there you have it. I promised you mud sill details. Big Red and I delivered. There you go, mud cell details. If you're looking for more, Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. I post these details, stuff like this all the time on there. I'm always sharing information. So uh, join in the conversation. Um, intelligent comments only, please. Um, I don't wanna have to cut you off, but I am always up for discussion. There's so many ways to put a building together. And uh, as much as we know, there's still a whole lot of things to learn. So let's have that discussion. If you're still looking for more, Build Show Network, there are a number of contributors putting up great stuff. It's all interesting. I love watching the other contributors' videos and uh, learning from them. So we share information. Sometimes we get together. It's uh, pretty cool. And then lastly, Peter Yost, Jake Bruton, and myself. We make up the Unbuilder podcast. So go listen. It's on YouTube. You don't even have to just listen. You can actually watch too. Watch how those guys try and beat up on me and I have to fend them off. But I'm up for the task. Not a problem. Anyways, there you have it. Framing, mud sill detail. Now you know as much as I do about it. So anyways, until next time, long live our buildings.